So I made a sheet of some small circles. I know we like to work large and that's very important, thinking about both movement and uh, our hands to make things. So I am going to get a pen. And if you weren't with us on day one a while ago, although we've done this more than once, these are pre-printed, but if you've not yet um, made any kind of photocopy of dots, you don't have two circles, but if you want to make it yourself, it's probably even better. So the one circle to kind of get our fingers, hand, wrist, arm, really a whole arm movement is recommended here. I would go ahead first and make a counter clock. Oh, come on, pen. Oh, that pen needs a little work. <laughs> Let me get another one. What happens? Here we go. So I'm going to go counterclockwise first. And it's interesting. I don't usually do very good counterclockwise. That's okay. That's why I practice and warm up. It's good for me. And on this one, I'm going to start at the center and go out. And if you remember, or if you're just doing this for the first time, this is where we're trying to just kind of thoughtfully, mindfully, basically we're building a clock. So this would be the equivalent there, right? So we're gonna go to six next. Now I'm just using my hand, but if I wanna involve my whole arm, there we go. When I'm pushing, I tend to use just my hand. When I'm pulling, I find it easier indeed to use my arm. And usually center out, it's a little easier for me. I don't know about you, but now we went that way. Now let's go clockwise. I tend to get a little better circle, except I went more oval on this one. Okay, and now I don't know about you, uh, but it's somewhat of a challenge for me. I'm gonna go from outside in. And when I say it's a challenge, it's just making sure to find this center point this reminds me of when the neurologist wants me to touch my nose and their finger, and then they keep moving their finger left to right. It's like a moving target. And so finding this center very neatly, it is like a moving target. See, like those are close, those are far. So not terribly equidistant, but that's why we practice and warm up with such things. So does speed help? Does slowness help? I'm going to do one more on my small side. I'm going to pick this one. And I'm going to go from out to in. Now, granted, you might say, well, what if we just go all the way down? You can. And then we could go all the way across. Those are pretty nice looking quadrants. And then if I go out, or if I go in, yeah. In just doesn't work for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> so we're getting warmed up. If you don't like the way this particular pen or pencil, whatever you're using, feels on the paper, grab a different one. I'm going to get a pencil and a pen. That was a micron. But you can feel, and that really helps you. Oh, a pencil's nice and smooth compared to the marker. I like that. See what's working for you. I don't know about you, but December snuck up on me. It's amazing. On this particular paper, the ink doesn't even write quite as smoothly as the pencil. I'm interested in that. Hmm. I have copier paper in about four different weights. I wonder what weight this is. I don't remember. All right, last one. Whether you go in or out, just kind of get your hands warmed up. And we're going to look. Oh, that's not bad. It feels pretty good. Yay. So we're going to look at what we're doing. Now, this one is on rock. Anybody who's been around knows I like to paint on rocks. Um, I like the texture, the dimension. But we're going to do this little cute cutie patootie. This is just paint and micron. I also, if you've got any, um, what do they call it? Glitter glue. The glitter is fun uh, to add to these stars or snowflakes or sparkles, however you choose to do this. 
Here is one that was my original rock. And this one has a star. On this one, I decided to go with a scarf. Um, this one is just three charcoal buttons. Now, why am I doing these little snowmen like this? My cats have decided, the young cats, have decided they like climbing the Christmas tree. It's kind of problematic. So I have a metal tree and I'm just hanging these little paper ornaments on them. And we'll talk about how to cut the circles. Uh, there's many ways. You can freehand it. You can use uh, some devices that help and I'll show you what we've got. You can improvise as well. You can make these any size. These are approximately three and a half, four inches. And we're gonna look at different ways to do the snowman and time permitting, or if you're interested, we will look at this little chicky. He's more oval than round, but we can make him round if you would prefer all round. We're also gonna talk about the options. Maybe you guys uh, like stamps like I do. So this is what is called house mouse. And the house mouse stamps just make me smile. I love house mouse. This is one, and in order to have a little border, I just put a little piece of paper on the back. And so it's one stamp that is the Christmas lights, one stamp that is one of the house mouse critters. I put a little cap on him. And then these are just little marks I made using a fine micron to look somewhat like snow and little, yeah. Get a little interaction going on. So that's fun. And then this one is the original rock, but on our circle. So let's talk about our circles kind of quickly. Won't be too time consuming here. We'll come back to this one. You might have noticed I used vellum to make a snow globe in essence. And when I actually finish it, um, inside will be the little uh, snow pieces that make it look like a actual snow globe you would shake. And of course, all of this can be colored, uh, but that's just another fun way we're gonna look at that. So let's start with how we might cut this. Yes, you can do it freehand. And if you have an old tape piece, this is the perfect size. Let me show you. And even if you're using a real tree or an artificial tree and you have all your own ornaments set and ready to go, who's to say you can't add some little paper ornaments like this and embellish them? So here we're going to go ahead and just take the tape, the empty tape roll. There's a lovely circle. I think it's a lovely circle. And we can use scissors. So this would be one way to just very gently then, or very, I guess with concentration, I should say, by paying attention, go ahead and start cutting your circle, right? Well, let's look at some options. Some of you may be like me, and you may be um, former scrapbookers or Maybe you still scrapbook, but it's really slowed down a lot. This is a series of blades from, what do you think? For those of you who know, Creative Memories. So I am going to take a circle. And there's a variety of these. So I can go inside. I can go outside. I've got very large. But what's really neat, or what I think is very neat, and you, there's many systems like this. You don't have to buy creative memories and you may not need to be cutting out circles. Tracing them and cutting them is fine. But what you can see is that the two lines on the red are pretty close, a little further, a little further apart, right? So here's what you do. If you take this blade, which is inside, you just have to pull it out. You'll notice that that's the width from these little posts to the blade, will the posts go in this guide? And then you just start pulling. So that would give me a circle that size. Well, what if I want one smaller? Well, then I go to the next size. And then if I put this one here, and I'm just demoing this for you, uh, you're going to see this in just a moment. Let me get the big one. So what you'll notice is this was 
the closest, it's going to give you the tightest or biggest circle you can out of this particular lunch. Then we go here and you notice that it is just slightly bigger, which makes the circle smaller. And then the biggest. So I'm going to go back to this. And I'm going to go to this. There we go. Put this on. Oh, you could also, of course, use a blade like this and cut around your tape. So that's a variety of ways we can get those circles. I am going to now make a neat one. And I'm going to go here with this one. And you'll notice that I'm cutting on a board that uh, they call them self-healing. If you're a quilter, a sewer, seamstress, what have you, you may have something like this. And so I'm gonna punch that out. Now, when it comes to the snowman, you are welcome to stick to, I'm gonna go to a smoother surface now that I'm not cutting, otherwise I'll get little ridges. So here now, how do we draw this little guy? What's, or gal, who, you know, your snowman maybe? I don't know what your snowman is. What I like to do is actually start with the head. So here's the one I'm gonna be using, similar size here, okay? And, and I just like to basically get that little oval roundish head going. Now that's, I know I'm doing it in pencil and it's rather light, but if I do dark first, well, I'm gonna go ahead. We'll just do dark first. Nothing sacred about this little snowman if I mess him up. I'm gonna get this pen. So I am going to leave a little spot here. And if you're worried that you can't even freehand this, um, I think that there's an example of this on the paper that you may have downloaded for the schedule and you could just cut it out and trace it. And I'm gonna leave my little spot from a carrot nose. So now we're gonna go in and we're just gonna kind of uh, put our little nose, it's kind of perfect, just what do we wanna do? A little bit of this. Then we'll get a little mark here and there. And there's our little carrot nose. All right, now the eyes are right here, pretty simple. Let's put a nice big grin. I mean, I'm gonna make this one a little girl with a little heart lip. That's fun. <laughs> now, what about the body? You don't want just, I mean, you, you can, I shouldn't say you don't want. You could, if you want, just have a little circle here. Like if your snowman was a traditional one, two, three, right? But I'm gonna go kind of plump like this one. You do what you want. But I'm, and I, I think I want my sticks. Oh, oh, did you notice? All of my little snowmen have their arms up for every victory counts. Don't want plain old sticky arms for our snowman. We want to have every victory camp. So I'm going to go right about here. See where the smile is? I'm going to come right off that. And again, I'm using a permanent marker here. You might be using pencil, which can let you have options. I'm going to be a little cattywampus. I don't want it perfectly centered. And then I'm going to do this, meaning that's kind of the snowman's armpit, if that's such a thing. Bring my stick out. Okay, we're going to get a little finger action. I know we just have kind of a threesome on this. You can also bring the little stick down here if you wanted to. Like, well, I'll show you over here. So if we go like this and we go one, two, we can come down further to get three. Doesn't have to be, you know, you make it any way you want. You can put little lines in this as if those represent uh, part of the branch. Also, when we color, you might use dark and light brown in order to get that shape you want. Now I have to admit the star is cute. And if you want to go with the star, let me point something out. Here is a nice, neat star, the good old fashioned way that I learned how to do it. Basically. But this one you'll notice is a little more cattywampus. So I like to do that and then come this way. And then I'm gonna go just a little one here and a bigger one there. 
But you can do anything you want with the star if you want to do star. I don't know if you can see, but there are tiny black dots just around when we start coloring and painting. That's fine. Um, using a paint pen, Posca, my favorite, but there are a variety. You can use some of the white gel pens for this. They work pretty good. Um, but that's where we're going to go ahead and do these little white stars, which on this one, I've done this way on this one. I've actually done them as stars and the other way. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. And sometimes people will just go one, two, three. One, two, three. And they'll go big, little, small. And you do what you want. What looks good for you? How do you like your little stars? So we come here to our little girl, little guy, and I think I'm going to stick with the scarf because I want to show you how to do the scarf if you're interested. Stars, I think we're all pretty good with. Not the, the, and of course, the, the three coal buttons, three circles, then do black, three, yeah, short and sweet. Okay. So on her, I am going to bring my scarf from the edge of the shoulder. Just about like that, let her have a little neck, okay? Going to bring, like, if we have it indeed tucked over, we're gonna do a little bit of this. Okay. Then we're gonna take this side. And if you want to, of course, you can add a few lines to represent the fabric -y look of a scarf. And you know what? I'm gonna put a little, Star-shaped pin right here to be holding her scarf on. Yeah. Okay, now the other things on the background, let's do in a moment. So I don't know if you're using markers, colored pens, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, but I think I am going to use watercolor. We've used the others quite well. I know what, I'm going to do half and half. I am going to do uh, red. No, yeah. Now let's go green for this scarf. Then red, let's go green. So these are watercolor pencils. This particular brand is Goldfaber Aqua. I have a variety, you may as well, but I am just going to color. This is what I love about watercolor pencils. You just color like it's a pencil. And then we're going to add a touch of water. I'm laying, I am layering on quite a bit. I want this to be relatively intense. And if you wanted to, you could get a darker green to add a little bit of depth while you're coloring. And just take your time and enjoy. I like to listen to the pencil on the paper. I am using watercolor paper. I failed to mention that. You may be using copier paper, any kind of paper that you have available. Okay, now what do we do? We take, this happens to be a watercolor paintbrush, but you could take a regular paintbrush. And I have a, I love these things. I don't know if you guys have seen these. I know it's just messy, but it travels with me because it collapses. I love that. So I am going to get my brush primed. And these come uh, just like paint brushes in a variety of um, sizes of brush itself. 
And I'm just going to add a little water. I know we're not finished with our picture, but I just want to show you. And I think you've used these. We've used them. But we just get uh, a nice, soft smoothing, smoothing of the watercolor pencil. Okay. Now, this is a set of watercolor paints. And you can just use you know, a $3 children's set. I really actually kind of like the Prang. I think they're 10 or 20 based on how many little uh, colors you get in there. But I want to use just a little bit of blue now from this. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of uh, color to my little snowman, snow lady. and a little bit to the sky. And then I'm gonna darken it. Now this is a very bright blue compared to what we might use, but I wanted it to really show up for you. You can put down wax paper, paper towel, when you're painting or using your pencils. Probably could, should do that. And I am going to make it just a little darker at the bottom, it tends to be what I do when I make these. I love making the snowmen. My little wire tree is just gonna have a snowman and a house mouse theme. Okay. Now, if I start using more water, I can just spread this without adding more paint because the water is what moves it around. And, and remember not to be judgmental of your work. Uh, when you get finished, I guess you could say it, it satisfies you or it doesn't. But uh, always let a picture kind of unfold, let it develop before you start thinking, oh, I don't like it. Ah, we like them. Now I'm gonna show you while this little section is wet, I'm going to show you something with the watercolor pencil. Okay, first I showed you apply pencil and then get wet. Now I'm going to show you, here we have some water. Watch what happens when we add the watercolor pencil. It will smooth out. Now, because I have a uh, pretty good amount of water on here, you're gonna see a little bit of pilling of the paper. Don't let that bother you. But you do wanna be a little bit careful. And you can finish this off a variety of ways. We'll look at some of those once we get however much paint we wanna apply. There's just something fun about snowmen. We don't even have to name him Frosty, right? We just, actually this, this would be Frostette. <laughs> kind of put a little lip on it. That's fun. All right, so we're getting a little puckering from where I added a lot of water, not to worry. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two Arms, we'll do this one with the watercolor. And I wanna have just a little bit of a uh, reddish brown, right about there. And then I want a little bit darker, right about there. Okay. Then, just because we have pencils out as well, let's look how it goes with pencils. And I'm not gonna put water on these. Let's just see how they look. That's a nice twig, I like it. One of our pecan trees died. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and darken this one up. One of our pecan trees died, so last week we had it cut down and I asked them to cut some pieces for me off of a limb that was about 
six inch in diameter. And so now I've been stenciling and making Christmas uh, decorations out of those pieces of wood. Now, what shall we do with her little nose? Shall we watercolor or pencil? I'm gonna watercolor. So I'm gonna go with this nice carroty orange. You also notice that with the watercolor, you know, you get these spots. So at the end, especially on something this small, I'm just gonna like dot it so it's all as close to the same color as possible. Yeah. So she's beginning to look pretty good here. Do we wanna do anything else to her? So she has a wee bit of color. I'll just kind of move these around a little. And I don't know if we think about strawberries and how we get nice color of strawberries. We might dip a little pinkish juice, reddish juice on our snowman or snow girl. I think I'll just get a little color there. A little color there. Okay. Okay, so fun. She's just having a good day. Now, let's talk about our background. What would we like to do? How about our little pinwheels first? I don't know why, but I like the pinwheels. So I'm going to get my marker. Actually, it's going to need to dry a little bit first. Let's see what's dry. Nothing's terribly dry. Let's go ahead and add... You might be using a white pencil, a uh, white paint, or in my case, uh, I'm going to use the white Posca paint. And all we have to do with these is just kind of make sure that it's going to start. Yes. And so I'm going to go first with the simple. of a variety of sizes. And then I think I will put just one star. I'm going to put it on this dark spot. Okay. I'm going to balance that over here. Okay, put a few dots here as if well, that one got messy. That's nice, you can use your finger to take them off. This is gonna be like snowflakes, a little snow falling on my snow person here. You do not have to use black for the spirals. You don't have to do the spirals. In fact, I think I'm going to do mine today in a navy blue. I have a navy blue here today. And I'm just gonna, I usually do three. Uh, I accidentally, where's that other one? I accidentally realized when I punched my hole at the top of this, that I lost a spiral. So I'm gonna go off and make, it be a little bit cattywampus. I love the word cattywampus today. I'm using it too much. So we're just gonna spiral in, spiral in, do a different way this way. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more here. Might as well do one more here. Yeah, I think my snow girl is singing. So she's gonna have some little musical notes in the air. Yeah. 
optional, of course. And I do like to have my edges finished. So either I would make another circle in a different color where I could put them together. Or what you'll notice I like to do, because I've done it on most of these, um, it's just the little dashes. And I'm gonna go ahead and do those in black. I just start here. And again, this is where that warm up and those circles and the lines on the face of the clock are nice to give you some practice with your fine motor skills. I hope you're not losing them. Or if you have micrographia, maybe this will help. As you, I mean, I hope you don't want them so straight, but if you wanted them perfectly straight, you could take your little circle and do your dashes very neatly if you want them very neat. And then continue. And you keep doing that while I get a joy break. Hmm? There's our joy break jar. See what we can do and what's just for thought. Okay, we don't wanna do this right now, but here's a joy break for anyone with house plants. Take up to five minutes to tend to them. Nip off uh, dried out buds or leaves and add water before you leave them until next time. House plant, joy. Ah, here's one. You see, walk your dog. <laughs> Can't do that one right now either. Call a friend you've not seen in months. All right, Joy Jar, give us something we can do. Huh. Go to the park and swing. How long has it been since you were on a swing? Maybe you've got kids or grandkids, so you have a swing set in the back. Uh, here's one specific to the holidays. Turn on twinkle lights. Well, ooh, I bet we can do this. I just saw it. Sit still for two minutes and do nothing. Do you notice my little encounter with the truck door is almost outgrown? So let's just pause, kind of just look, maybe meditate on your little snowman, whether yours is a star or charcoal buttons or a red scarf or a green scarf or a blue scarf or whatever you did. And just do nothing. Just kind of look and think, how do I want to finish this? What, what would make me really like this little snowman, snow girl? They're all different. Notice today I really used an aqua blue instead of the regular blue. We don't really have to go full two minutes, but we'll come back to the joy jar, see if there's more in there that we can do right now. Okay, so with your little snowman, maybe you finished, take just a minute to finish up to the midnight. Get this going on a semi. Full punch. If you don't have a hole punch, you can just use your scissors to cut a little slice here to hold a ribbon. I'm gonna go right about there. And I have a little bit of ribbon here. And you know, at this time of year, maybe you don't have ribbon, ribbon's not your thing. Well, you know, you might still have some hangers for your ornaments. Extras. So let's get one of these. Of course, you can have straight ones, green ones, silver ones, gold ones, black ones. 
I like these cute little dudes. And you can hang it this way. You can hang it this way. You can put, I'm gonna put ribbon on. Then we're gonna go to our little chicky. Here we go. Well, it's a little bit wide. Let me, there we go. Lately, I have been painting rocks, making journals, um, getting things ready for Christmas gifts. I like to make some wood projects. Don't know what you have had time and interest in doing. I hope you're doing something creative. Um, to enjoy and especially when we're gifting things it's nice when it's handmade so if we have a little I didn't make that bow very lovely but it will work and in we go okay I need it right in front of me hang on And I also want to show you how you can use these little guys for greeting cards. You know, that's one of my favorite things. All right, so here's our little snowman. Gonna hang it on the tree. Oh, too fun. Let's talk about vellum just briefly. I got some out. Let's hear some here. Nope, my vellum disappeared. But I imagine you know what vellum is. And uh, I wanted to just show you how to cut your circle. One of these, um, let me see what my, here it is. Here are the things that you can use to fill uh, your little snow globe. And it, it's just, it's darling when you fill them. I, I don't have it ready. You um, can put the glitter in the center and then glue all the way around the edges and boy, let it sit still. You can use a sewing machine and you can sew around here. Um, you can use double-sided tape that does show through the vellum pretty badly. I think I don't really like double-sided tape on these. They have what they call a vellum tape, but you know. Uh, you can use a variety of things to paint on the snow globe or anything that is vellum if you wanted to layer for a special effect. Um, let me see, like this guy I made today is pretty bright with that aqua. What if to tone it down, we put that one under vellum? Actually, because it's brighter, it shows up better. I like that. That's an interesting thought. Okay. So that is the snowman or snow woman or girl or boy or whatever. And uh, now let's look at our little chick. How are we gonna draw our chick? Now this one is more oval, but the good news is the little set even comes with ovals. So I could put it like this. Don't want it on here though. You can put it like this. And I can take my smallest blade. And I can cut it out. And this is a rock that I took a uh, photo of and then printed it on watercolor paper. There's all sorts of ways you can do this. I have to admit, I've used these blades a lot in scrapbooking, so they're getting just a wee bit dull at this time. Not a problem. I'm just gonna use scissors to finish it. Let me show you how to draw this little chick. 
So fun. I guess it's a little chick elf. And of course, I was a little off centered there, so I probably used something dark to go over it. But here, let's draw this. So the first thing when I'm drawing this little one is I tend to start with the hat. So I go ahead, and if you want to make it smaller, perhaps. Uh, so I go ahead and get just the little base part started. And you can do, you know, the little holly and berries if you wish. And then get this little line. You can come up and it is, you can make it as perfect or straight as you wish. I kind of like to make it just a little bit messy. Then this one's going to come over toward that side. And then we come like this, just a little arch. Going to make this a little bit bigger arch. Bring it down to it. You could do a little ball here. So you could just do like this. Or you could do just a little turn down if you wish. And then for the chickie's sweet little face, it's just a little eye. And a little eye. And those are pretty equidistant from here to here and here to here. And then those are a little closer. And then the little nose is just a little like this. Get a little beat going here. You can be as straight or as not straight as you wish. I usually go about like that, put little dots right there. And then the rest is almost like this little guy. We're just going to. And you can do this if you wish. You can do straight. You can, you know, however you want to do that. So I went rounder here. This is more flat oval. All good. Coming out here to the little arm number one. I'm coming over here for arm number two. And then starting to get kind of where you want the little body to be. Whatever moves you is pretty fun. And then the legs are just too fun. Now, if you don't like it the way you first do it, just add a layer. That's good. Okay, I want that to be a little bit better. And when I color it, I can fix that. Then the legs are going to be like little knobby knees. Okay. Look at that. Those lines are just perfect to be those little knobby knees. <laughs> And then it's kind of bow them a smidge. Maybe this little chickie rides horses. I don't know. Reindeer, that's what it is. The little calf on that. Yeah. And then the shoes are going to have little rolled socks. Yeah. Then kind of like little elf look going on here. However bigger little you would like for these to be with a little turned up. And again, I think because I did this on the hat, I'm going to go like that there. Okay, we're going to get this little one here. You can stripe these that way. You can stripe these this way. I want to make that just a little bit longer. I want to make this just a little bit longer. A little pink cheek coming up. And then when we're coloring this one, I'm going to get, I, I really like the red hat myself, so I'm going to stick with a red hat. But I do want some shading. So I'm picking three colors. Now, these are just regular colored pencils. You could be using markers, um, watercolor paint, acrylic paint. Um, but I'm going to go with a little bit of the darker first. And uh, have you guys worked with blender pencils? Blender pencils are marvelous. Let me show you what a blender will do for your work. Okay, getting a little dark there. Mm 
and then go to the next one. You can use lines, circles, whatever moves you. I'm working on this rough sheet. I forgot to get my smooth sheet. There it is. I wondered why I had those marks. There we go. Oh yes, much smoother. The surface below when you're using pencils or what have you is pretty significant. Now let me show you how a blender works. Well, my blender is in need of sharpening, but it should work. And it will just say colorless blender. If you've never bought one before, it'll say blender or colorless blender. But here, if you don't like some of those marks from your pencils, all you have to do is blend. And it will also let you blend colors together. For example, if I want a dark streak right about here, this will blend those together. And you can use the blender once you have some color on it to actually, it'll only be a light layer typically, but, but it will move the color for you. Sometimes people like to hold their pencils this way to get a little better control. Just depends on what works for you. You can turn your paper, of course. There are so many cute things. Uh, gnomes are very popular. And a gnome is just too easy to draw. It's great, but let me just finish this. Okay, now a gnome, just as an aside, would be a big nose, usually the hat that comes right over it. however tall you want to make it. And then of course the rest is a nice big beard. And then it might have little legs and feet. Depends on what you're doing with your little dude. Yeah, hadn't thought about doing a gnome today. That's fun. Kind of make little wooden. If any of you are from Scandinavia, there's a clumpen. I think they call these big old wooden shoes clumpen. We're going to put little tassels on those like little elf shoes. And you can do these out of felt, etc. Might do a little bit of this. When you're coloring the little beard, you can do different things. Ooh, and you can checker the little cap. So then you could do it in, let's say, I don't know what, let's, um, let's find black. So if you want to check her, red and black, green and black are just too much fun. I'm going to do green. Since we have green out. And then if you feel like that green is too light, just give it a little overlay of your black or a gray, and there you've got a lovely green and black checker. So you can just keep playing and have fun with these. Um, just quickly, let's see if there's a joy break we can do or that you could do when we leave. Ooh, we did this once the other day, maybe two months ago, massage your hands. That's always a good one. Something that kind of gives you that sensory feel. Gotta love that. Okay, so we have snowman, chick, gnome, Kind of a bonus. 
And on your little cards, let me find one. Okay, let's look at this little guy. Here is glitter glue, because you know, glitter is doggone messy, right? <laughs> Here it comes, it's all delivered for you. And all you have to do is, like, if I wanted to make little glitter ends on these sparkly lights, that would be a fun way uh, to brighten up the picture. So you've got so many options. Don't let that overwhelm you. Just do what you want to do. Keep it simple by writing yourself a plan. This is what I will do. Um, and don't forget, if you live near me or if wherever you are, kindness rocks. Uh, the winter ones are just so much fun to put out. So this little guy, I saved him to show you, but um, he's going to go outside in the next day or two. And then also, one last thing, when you make, for example, this guy, the snow globe, right? It's going to be a greeting card. Uh, these are some I have in the works. And so this is just a present. This was off of a greeting card I received. And I cut this little square out of the front of the card. And then I backed it on this dark green and backed it on some other Christmas paper. I put my little scatter joy stamp on the back. Going to put a little Christmas saying inside. But um, this one is going to be a little tree in a jar. So that's why I've got the little vellum jar. Got a little bit of this up here. Now, this one is going to be a gnome in a snow globe once I get it all assembled. And so by putting it on the front of the card in this pocket, of course, imagine a hole with a ribbon. Uh, then they get a little gift uh, from me. And this little heart says, oh, joy. <laughs> All right, I shouldn't be laughing. I just get kind of, I have too much fun with this. And here is another jar, not a snow globe, but a jar with a snowman. So these are more colorful ways and more fancy ways uh, that we can color these little guys. Notice that this one's cap is down. That's good. Big circles, big pink cheeks. Instead of a straight line, this one is dot, 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 dot. Options. I like it. Thanks, Lorraine. Thank you, everybody. And have a really, really great holiday season. Mm -hmm.